What is up, Bat Family, and welcome to Batman Theory, where we take a deep dive into comic books, movies, cartoons, and everything in between that has to do with The Dark Knight. So guys, before we get started in today's episode, I'd really like to ask you, if you do like what we have, uh, please subscribe to our channel. We're giving you daily content on Batman and anything that has to do with Batman. And uh, in order to grow, we you know really appreciate a like and a subscribe. At the end, as soon as we get to a thousand subs, at the end of that, we will be giving away a free backlit Batman sign. So, on to the video. And here we go. So, on today's episode of Batman Theory, guys, I want to talk to you about the end scene, the or as a lot of people like to call it, the nightmare scene uh, in Justice League. This is where Batman, uh, or as pretty much everyone there calls him, Bruce, uh, is talking to Joker. And a lot of things happen in this scene. It's only about four, four and a half minutes long, but there's a lot to unpack here, and a lot I want to talk about, and what it could have, what we could have gotten in the Snyderverse. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, getting right off to an easy start, Joker knows exactly who Batman is. He calls him Bruce, he talks about uh, all the people that he's lost in his life, because Mara from Aquaman, because uh, Aquaman gets killed by Superman, presumably, uh, she tells Bruce, who have you ever loved? And Joker speaks up and says, oh, you know, Bruce has loved <laughs> many people, and he's lost a lot of people, you know, a dead father, a dead mother, and before he can continue, Bruce tells him to watch what you're saying. You know, basically, you better watch what you, you be, better be very careful what you say next. And then Joker says, an adopted son. Obviously, he's talking about Jason Todd. It could be he's talking about Dick Grayson in this universe, but I think we're going to all assume it's Jason Todd if we're going to stick to comic book continuity. And the interesting thing here is, for first of all, Joker knows exactly who Bruce is in this timeline. It's the future, Batman, and just a small ragtag team of heroes and villains really have to team up to try to defeat Darkseid and Superman. Bruce's identity obviously is out. Everyone knows who he is, including his villains like Deathstroke and Joker. And on top of that, Joker's just trying to be, you know, is just trying to get under Bruce's skin a little bit. He can't help himself. And he brings up Robin. And one thing I found really interesting was he essentially calls Bruce out. And Bruce really doesn't have much to say about this. Batman really was very stunned almost to look on Ben Affleck's face when they're filming this kind of showed that he wasn't expecting it and he kind of wasn't wrong. Joker wasn't wrong when he said what he said. And what he basically said to summarize it is you sent a man to take me out. You sent a, a boy wonder to do a man's job. And basically that's what you get for doing it and not doing it yourself. After this, he also says to, to Batman, how many different timelines are other people going to die before you allow yourself to be killed? And again, Bruce really doesn't know what to say on this, so it sounds like there's been multiple instances that they've sent Flash back in time, and he has failed. And this is to, you know, basically re-correct the future. Very interesting, and judging by Batman's lack of response and almost stunned look he has, he isn't wrong. Joker sounds like kind of hits the nail on the head on this, and he says, you need me. Now, we don't know what this means necessarily, but by the sounds of it, and Deathstroke does reiterate, you know, do we really need this clown? And Batman says, yes, unfortunately we do. So there has to be something Joker knows, whether it's from talking with someone like Lex Luthor, or he knows something on how to stop the anti-life equation. So it's very interesting. And I'm going to do another video about Justice League 2 and 3, if we'll ever get the Snyderverse versions of those. I highly doubt that. Um, that's that's a huge, huge gamble for DC and Warner Brothers to make. I doubt they'll do that. But it is really interesting nonetheless. It's interesting to think about the possibilities. And this whole sequence here, the final nightmare sequence, was actually shot during lockdown in Zack Snyder's backyard and his driveway. They just used a bunch of green screens. And I think that's pretty cool that a lot of the actors like Ben Affleck came back uh, Jared Leto, and they all came back and actually shot this. I think that just kind of shows how much faith they had in the Snyderverse and the Snyder Cut itself. So another thing I want to talk about real quick is what does this all mean? Now, in the grand scheme of things for the DCU, probably doesn't mean much, but it does give us a glimpse of what we could have gotten, and I think that's what kind of hurts the most here, is we could see, like, all the stories kind of coming together slowly and, con and converging, and that was a lot of people, myself included, 
my biggest problem with the DCU was they didn't take their time. Marvel definitely, you know, Marvel had 20-something movies to back it up, or we only had three or four for DC, so it didn't seem fair in that sense, but unfortunately I don't think it's going to matter anymore. However, this scene was so tantalizing, and I do think Zack Snyder added it at the, at the end to kind of salivate fans and get us really excited for what's coming next if he's allowed to do anything if dc even wants him to and honestly even if, if zach even wants to he might not want to come back after doing this side first so i'm trying to wrap my head around what jared leto's joker was needed for what did he know and how to stop all future you know all what's going to happen in the future how did he know exactly how to make it work because clearly batman knew as the leader of the team, that he was needed, that Jared Leto, you know, couldn't be killed at that moment. Because Batman does promise him he will kill him. And the other interesting thing I really want to bring up very quickly is when Batman mentions, because Joker talks about all the people that Batman has, has held while he died and essentially how many dead eyes he's looked into before he feels dead inside himself. And Batman retorts that he's been in dead he's been dead inside for a long time. And then mentions Harley Quinn and her dying. And it's very interesting because that does seem to actually kind of get Joker to snap out of his little quirkiness. And he, almost, and he says, okay, good point. And offers a truce. And that's kind of where we end the whole thing. And it just makes me as a DC fan want to see the rest of this vision. Um, I've heard rumors, obviously, about some of the things Zack Snyder was planning on doing for uh, Justice League Part 2 and Part 3. Whether I agree with all of them, I probably can't say. Uh, the whole supposedly Bruce and Lois have any affair. Really am against that, but you know, we'll get to that in a different video. So until then guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and stay safe.